Hey, it's Noor from Tesla.com. I'm here at Maker Faire 2014 with Jeff DeBoer. You are an artist from Canada here at the Bay Area. Welcome, first of all. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you for bringing your amazing pieces of art. You make cat armor and mice armor, metal armor in front of us. How did you get started with this and why armor for animals? Why armor? Um, I, I grew up uh, around metal my entire life and I've had a lifetime fascination with armor. I built my first suit uh, in high school. Uh, later I went into art college and I majored as a jewelry designer and it was at that time that my scale was this big and I wanted to try to uh, make something authentic in that scale. So not a model, so what is the size? Well, mouse was the obvious thing and of course after I built my first suit of mouse armor my whole life changed. To this day I've been, I'm, I've been doing this for 26 years. Um, recently I was actually contacted by the head of armories in Leeds in the Tower of London and their acquisition committee has deemed the work authentic. And they're actually looking at collecting one of my pieces now for their collection. That's awesome, can we talk about the armor, specifically because you have lots of different styles of armor. So what is your interest and what kind of research did you have to do to, to figure out, to adapt real historical armor oh, yeah. to something that would work for an animal? Um, I stuck to the idea of just the cat and mouse. You know, people say, can you use dogs and birds? Yes, you could. but but there's so much variety in, in the design of armor through history, and, and being obviously a historian myself, um, I think it's really fascinating to explore how all those different cultural imp, uh, influences in designs affect the, 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 the design of a mouse. So, you know, the samurai mouse and, and the gothic mouse, or this like this Persian cat, um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's their personalities and sort of the, these, these cultural references that give them their excitement. Let's talk about the pieces in particular. You have the Persian cat here. Um, do you go into a piece knowing what type of techniques you'll be using? Does that inform the armor choice or do you learn new techniques? Well, I mean, this is a constant learning process. Um, you know, the evolution of the work over a lifetime. So, you know, somebody asked me, do I get tired of building mice? The truth is I never do because I'm, I'm always slightly different. I'm always exploring a new technique. Um, and you're always constantly learning. So each piece really is a reflection of, of a journey, not so much of a destination. And here, this is samurai mouse yeah, armor samurai here. Rat. That's a samurai rat. Can you yeah. tell us a story about this piece and what the journey was for this piece? I think I built this piece in 1992. At, at the time when I built this piece is when I started to really transform from trying to make pieces quickly to becoming more patient. And it's, it's, it take, it's not, patience is something that we, in our culture aren't used to, we're, we're used to fast. So this is about learning how to take the time. And, and so this piece is really important to me because it, it was the time when I finally started to settle down and really try to do a good thing. Um, and that's sort of where one's reputation comes through the art world too. I'm not, I'm not these things are painstaking, but, but they're also a joy to do. So I, this, this rat was, of course the word Samu rat makes sense. So, uh, so that was exploring just, just on the pun, what would that look like? I'm sure the number one question you get asked is, do animals actually wear these, have these actually been put on animals? So I gotta ask. Okay, yes, uh, you can, uh, although I can't recommend it. Uh, you know, I have my cats at home and they are measured and occasionally I bring home helmets and they all run when they see the helmet because they know it's coming. So uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, I, maybe that's the, the big joke in the whole thing is that it's, they're sort of the last animal that would ever want it. Uh, and I, and I think obviously that's where the fun is. How long does the piece usually take for you to start conceptualize and, and work and finish? Well, like all things, you know, mice are small, so they're relatively quick. Relatively quick. They, mice can be from 20 to 50 hours to make one, and cats can be anywhere from 120 to 300 hours to build one. And what are you working on next with this, the skills you've learned building mouse and cat armor for two decades? Um, well, I mean, this is, you know, I, I tell people cat and mouse armor is my day job, but, but this idea of connecting ideas, I think, is really principal in my work. So armor, mouse, okay, fine. But these days I've started to do things where I'm connecting technology and art as well, um, engineering and art, uh, and also connecting people. Uh, back in Calgary, I've, I've started this group, which is of artists, engineers, and designers, and we're all now going into the big collaboration mode. You know, the, the first the first era of my career was about me, and I think everybody would have to go through that. But this next era is going to be about us. So having arrived at a certain kind of an aesthetic and way of doing things and being able to work with industry as well, which is unusual for an artist, I want to be able to explore what can I do given all these resources and what's worth doing. 
So for me, you know, wearable technology is obvious. You know, I make ties. Um, so this is an awesome platform potentially for a tie. So the concept with this tie is this would be a, a flexible e-reader as the body of the tie. It would have a camera in the top. So it would have sort of that, some of that Google Glasses-like capabilities. This would also be able to allow you to use gesture controls. But the real fun of the tie is, is this artistic experience. I could get up in the morning, look at my iPad, choose my tie for the day. You and I could be having a conversation, you don't like my tie, you could take out your iPad or your phone and change my tie. Or perhaps my tie could run messages. Uh, if you can read this, I'm late for a meeting. But more importantly, some of the wearable technology is more, is right now sort of engineering and gadget driven, and some of it um, wears thin quickly. So what I'm trying to do with this is come up with a piece of classic technology. This will never need to be better than it is. And at the end of the day, this goes on a display on your wall as a work of art. So other artists could actually download images onto your tie, and you would never know what you're going to get when you come home. So this is working also as a canvas for other artists. So this would never necessarily have to go obsolete. And this is something, a product you're developing we're for a commercial release? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're developing. Right now we're just in the conceptual phase, and we're just starting to build the team around and make sure that we can get the technology right. Because some of this stuff is very doable, and some of this stuff is a little bit on the edge. Uh, there's certainly not a surface that I'm looking for that's been made yet that will work, but we're pursuing that right now. Thank you so much, Jeff, for chatting with us. You're definitely doing interesting things with wearables your entire career, from old technology to new technology, from yeah. mouse to ties, here at Maker Faire 2014. <laughs> Thanks so much, and you can check out Jeff's website for more of his cat and mouse armor. I'm Norm from Tesla.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks.